When we think of bees collecting nectar and pollen, this is the picture that often comes to mind, a colorful field of blooming wildflowers. While flowering herbaceous plants are an important source of nectar and pollen for both native bees and honeybees, they tend to provide them in the late spring, summer, and fall. In the very early spring, before the leaves even start to bud out, several species of trees are actively flowering and producing the food that will jumpstart the bees' yearly brood production. There are three groups that flower at this time and have species that can be found throughout eastern North America. While their flowers are not showy, they are super important for native bees and honeybees. Let's start off with the maples, trees in the genus Acer, of which there are nine species native to eastern North America that can be found in a wide range of growing conditions and are often used in landscaping. Maples are one of our most recognized trees, benefit several species of pollinators, and are a host plant for around 300 species of butterflies and moths, including the groovy looking rosy maple moth. This is also the group with the most noticeable flowers, if only because they are often red or yellowish green and stand out against the leafless branches and the sky. Maples provide both nectar and pollen to varying degrees depending on species and are some of the first trees to bloom in the late winter or early spring. A blooming maple can often be heard buzzing with the bees attracted to it and the very early blooming red maple, Acer rubrum, is often the first significant nectar and pollen source for the year. If you love early blooming native trees, make like a hungry bee and pollinate that like button. I'm giving the big picture overview of these tree groups in this video. If you'd like to see videos specific to each tree group, giving the best species for habitat and yard usage, please let me know in the comments. Next up are the elms, the trees in the genus Ulmus, which is a much smaller group and only has six species native to Eastern North America. They are quite adaptable and are found in a variety of growing conditions. At one time, the native elms were widely used in landscaping and along city streets, but the introduction of Dutch elm disease into North America in the 1930s greatly reduced their use. Although they still make great trees for pollinators and wildlife. Most elms bloom early, around the same time as the red maples where I live in Kentucky, but have very nondescript flowers. They are a good source of pollen and also of nectar in some locations. Although where the trees are growing geographically seems to be linked to the nectar production. In addition to providing food for bees, elms are host plants for around 215 species of caterpillars, including those of the super strange morning cloak butterfly that I've previously done a video on. There is a link to that in the description. Although this video is focusing on trees that provide early season bee food, all three of these tree groups are host plants for a huge array of caterpillars and other insects. All those tasty soft bodied larvae draw in tons of birds, especially neotropic migrant species like warblers, tanagers, and vireos that use the larval biomass to feed their young. When choosing plants, trees, and shrubs for your native landscape or larger scale habitat work, try to incorporate species that support a wide range of pollinators, other insects, and larger critters. These species are often referred to as keystone species. Maples and willows are both considered keystone species in the eastern United States. The willows, trees and shrubs in the genus Salix, are the largest group on this list with more than 20 species native to eastern North America. This is a diverse group with some species attaining large size and some growing as thicket forming shrubs. All are mainly found growing in moist to wet soils. The blooms of most species appear in the late winter to early spring, well before the leaves. Willows are dioecious, with male and female flowers, called catkins, appearing on separate plants. Both the male and female flowers produce nectar, and of course, the male flowers also produce pollen. The flowers aren't showy from a distance, although the soft, fuzzy, not fully open male catkins of several species are used in cut flower arrangements. This is another powerhouse tree group when it comes to hosting caterpillars with up to 455 species using willow as a host plant. And it is the preferred host plant for the monarch lookalike viceroy. I did a video a while back on how to tell the viceroy and the monarch apart, which I will link in the description. In addition, it is used by 14 species of willow pollen specialist native bees. There are also native shrubs that bloom early and provide food for bees. To learn about one that looks great in the landscape and is also a host plant for a super cute caterpillar, check out this video on Spicebush and be sure to get out and explore nature in your backyard. 